Hey, what's up, guys? Ah, the monster of Frankenstein. Now, this is there's so many versions of this. Uh, what are you gonna call them? Collections, the omnibus, right? Um, Dick Briefers, right? Uh, I gotta say, man, like this, this uh, this Frankenstein uh, series from Prize Comics. Never heard of them, right? Uh, but but man, this was like I gotta say for the time, right? This is the fifties. This is probably some of the best. Uh, I'm not gonna. Uh, I'll be honest. This is some of the best, like horror, like like epics, right? Oh, the continuing character Frankenstein is written by uh, Dick Briefer here. Uh, as they say here, Dick was a uh, one man band, right? I literally did everything. Wrote, drew, lettered, right? Briefer was a one man band. We like the one man bands, don't we, right? You know, Burtzum, right? Uh, the, uh, right. The lettering, then inking, right? Drawing, writing, writing and drawing. It's interesting they let the guy do that. Uh, essentially, uh, it's interesting the, the history of it. He started out. In the forties with this comic, right? Uh, and then made like a uh, right. The character ran as a serious feature. I'm right, you know. I will say for after reading these, and you see, there's about like what do you say, maybe about twelve, uh, fifteen, seventeen. This, uh, I'm just eyeballing. I could be wrong. Stories about a little more pages than the usual, maybe like twelve pages or whatever. I'm I'm just curious to see what these 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 early '40s stories were like. 1940, right? The war, always the war. Character ran as a serious feature through '45, right? 1945, the beginning of the end. <laughs> um, and then it turned into a hu out now humor comic. That's I like to see those humor ones after this one here, right? And then '49, right? I don't, I don't even think I don't think the Soviets even have the, the bomb yet in 49 uh, last appearance of the cartoon like the, the funny version it's titled in limbo for three years right crime and horror books right you know they always mention um, the uh, the uh, pre-code the horror comics when a lot of the comics that got the uh, the comics code eventually uh, adopted by many of the companies the, the things that really they're the things that the comics that really brought the heat down as they say on the people were the, the crime comics which are hilarious because none of the crime comics ever ended with the criminals like you know looking good or getting away but the uh, depravity in it probably in a lot of ways more than the the horror the fantastical supernatural horror comics that you hunt uh of course, these you know, like these psycho killer characters, sort of crossing over. Those probably had a bigger thing. The, the bottom line is what I'm saying is a uh, when this as we started here at number seventeen, these stories. Uh, I think this guy's skills really come together. Now, what am I saying? Right? These stories are essentially what you can say anti-hero stories of Frankenstein. Right? Uh, he he kills. He's hunted. He he gives it back to you know the people that torment him. Right? He kills uh, you know people. Right? This is like the the first story with him just like right chucking yo. That's right, Frankenstein. He hates the world. He hates his life. Uh, the people that come after them, he he fucks them up straight up. Right? And what's interesting is that they have a character in the beginning who shows up in in some of the stories, the descendant of Frankenstein. Who feels guilty? He's an American. I like this. They go, um, and this is telling. Yeah, it's interesting. Right? I don't know if Briefer was one of the guys that was in the military, but what we, you know, what we have we done to deserve this? The horror. We escaped the ravages of war. Always the war. Only to meet death at the hands of the Frankenstein monster. Hey, we cower in our beds while the descendants of the man who created the monster live in luxury in America. There's they who should die, not us. Yeah, he's <laughs> like that. And like I said, Frankenstein, I mean, he, you know, anyway. 
So this is the beginning story. And like I said, this is about all right, eight pages, but it's interesting how the page count goes up. So here's the, the second story. We're starting out. You know, there's this little hunchback character and a statue. Apparently, the Frankenstein monster is taken in by this uh, weird old couple uh, that he likes. The, uh, the statue of this woman gives him peace. And these two Americans jerk off. So if you go there. Bottom line is, uh, uh, it's just mayhem. I like how everyone ends in mayhem. And him sort of getting away, he, he, right? He, they become matchsticks. He always grabs the people and he likes to break them like matchsticks. But it was interesting how the whole idea was this little hunchback asshole took away the something that gave him peace. He's looking for peace, right? The statue of this woman. So now, it just it's interesting how they mention like, the stories. They they go around the world. He's on a ship here. And these criminals decide, you know, since Frankenstein is stowed away and he's killing, you know, people, all he's killing people that go after him. These two, these two lumpen proles decide they're gonna murder people and steal the stuff. And uh, they mention the one guy mentions, hey, this is not Frankenstein killing the people, but he doesn't steal things. So, and then he ends up killing these two criminals and I like to throw grenades at him, but anyway. Who, I, I, these this is I don't know man this this is I gotta say some of the best like he really did a great job on this comic you know making Frankenstein not I mean he's a violent you can say he's a violent goon but as the story is going on he, he he ends up going against you know criminals zombies other supernatural entities like these living dead zombies and of course when he feels when he meets them he's like. They're more like him than anything else. Yeah. Anyway, I'm trying to think of other stories that he fights. I mean, Frankenstein, he's like, when you think of Frankenstein Conquers the World, one of my favorite films, very similar, showing how Frankenstein is hunted down, how he's despised. He didn't ask to be born. Right? Oh, and you see him fighting, you know, dinosaurs. Like, yeah, fighting dinosaurs like King Kong, the other outsider who was taken away from his, you know, and, and treated like crap. So, you can see there's a real thing here. You know, there's a real, uh, this one with this, this, uh, like, Island of Lost Souls. This man turned a uh, jaguar into a woman and she fights Frankenstein, you know, but in the end, Frankenstein, he can never die. And, oh, I like how he fights the woman. He chucks her off the cliff. He fights the werewolf. So you can see where... These are like, in some ways, like the Paul Nashi werewolf movies later. There's always a weird ambiguity. The monster, in many ways, uh, he, uh, violent and slashing out, but the world that goes after him, the people that go after him, in some ways are the greater evil. Now, I know how this sounds, okay? Okay, and, and in the end, you can see here, you know, they have stuff in the back. It doesn't take away from the talent of the, the person involved. But let, let's just get in here. Yeah. Yeah, what, the uh, descendant, right? The uh, granddaughter. My grandpa and the golem. Oh... Yeah, of course, the, the whole, I'm not even going to get into the whole Gollum thing of it being a parable for, like, I don't know, like, not, uh, not causing trouble with the place you're in, with the majority population. I, I just, 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 just theory, just saying, as a theory, right? You know, and she brings up the idea of, uh, her grandpa died when she was five, okay. Interesting, uh, little, uh. It lives in Brooklyn. Hey, we're all. Well, I'm from Brooklyn too. So a, a different uh, ethnic extraction oh, on the one side. Ah, on the other side. Uh, oh, you know, on my other side, right? <laughs> you know, I'm not Pennsylvania German. On my other side, I'm the other German. Right? The the ones who. 
essentially took on the mono world and were crushed. Of course, this was just after the war. Of course, I'm giving you a very different <laughs> angle, but it doesn't take away from me enjoying these stories. Okay, and in terms of when you look at these pre code uh, stories, in terms of economy, right? Remember, you got some uh, some guy with a cigar in his mouth, you know, uh, on your ass as you draw this, right? You're not drawing this at home and emailing it digitally to your editor, you know, um, for your, uh, you know, personal, you know, taking care of your personal social time or whatever. I mean, these guys were working like, you know, you better get this in, Mac, and, and get your, you know, your $3 a page or whatever they made back then. But in terms of the economy of motion, getting the story going, getting all the stuff in there. Very interesting looking at this. Anyway. Mm. This one this this was the this is one of the infamous stories where this evil dude decides he's gonna uh, do something with him. He pretends to be a friend, but then he tries to cover him in molten metal. Right, but Frankenstein is the thing. I love how they mention too. Frankenstein can never die. He's indestructible. The grenades, bullets. You know, he he always comes back. I like how he he pours molten metal down the guy's mouth. Now, okay, in terms of the violence that's done in this comic, oh my god, oh my god. And I like how they show him. They do an X-ray of the body, which is interesting because I won't say how I know, but that is done. Believe it or not. And the X-ray the body and the metal. I like how the metal, although it's the opposite here. Black is well. Anyway, his uh, his his whole detective track is filled solid with metal. It's like oof, man. So we have some more stories here. The, uh, yeah, I, I'll round this out with, with some of the more, even the more infamous ones. Just saying, this one where somehow he comes. There are three brothers. One was a painter, one was a singer, was a conductor. And somehow, you know, they're evil dudes, though. And then they, you know, they, they, they mess with the monster. They do really horrible things to him. And so he gets revenge. Uh, he, you know, right. He tried, to bl he tried to blind the monster, so now he blinds him. <laughs> hey, Mo, what are you doing, Mo? Anyway. Right. And then, like, the, uh... The musician, he, oh, you know, he makes him deaf, and then the other dude, he rips his the singer, he rips his tongue. <laughs> yo, dude, yo, yo, man, yo, and it's like the horrible fate is the you know, right the monkey see right speak no evil, see no evil, hear no evil as they're in the insane asylum. Oof, whoa, man, talk about it was a mean spirited, right? It's like vengeance. Yeah, Old Testament vengeance. You know, there's other. You know, uh, my mother, my dad's people have have an idea of vengeance. It's called vendetta. So it's not. It's it's it's. I would argue it's universal. Uh, anyway, this is any of the story. I'm getting off on a tangent here. Uh, yeah, I just you you root for Frankenstein a lot, man. He's just yeah, fuck yeah. He just nobody he messes with. He doesn't kill innocent. Well, you know, it's innocence. What the hell are we? Right? It's a world of struggle and, and violence. This is one of the infamous stories here where he finds a woman. Right? There was another story where he had a woman who was like a giantess who was blind and didn't see him. And he took care of her. And, of course, she gets killed by a mob and he, he kills them. But this one here where he finds this beautiful woman and he like... But the thing is, like, where, did he, where is this beautiful woman? Why isn't she... Move. Why is she still all the time? Oh, oh, oh. Now we're getting into necrophilia. <laughs> well, you know, obviously something happens in the story. <laughs> uh, where he comes back after he gets... Something happens, he comes back, and then she's she's rotted. Oh. <laughs> Man, this dude, this dude has some issues, bro. <laughs> and of course, that makes the great art. Anyway, that was... The Monster of Frankenstein. Like I said, there's a lot of collections of this because it was a horror epic. Very tight. A very talented guy, writer-wise and you know, artist-wise, everything. He did the whole thing. Conveying like this this creature. 
as the protagonist, you know, and not making him a hero or sympathetic, but just putting him in this world, you know, this this world of you know, sometimes you don't know what this you know, this world of struggle, this world of hell, this world of pain, you know. But he's right, I like it. Anyway, that's the Monster Frankenstein.